Hello, this is a short podcast on how to put together the journal article that's due for the lab this week. You've been given a template in Microsoft Word. We tried to do the LaTeX one over the residential weekend, but it's okay to use the Word one. So you have this, this template, and obviously what you're going to do is come in here and, and put uh, the title. Typically the title, if you recall from reading journal articles, is the research question written as a declarative statement. You're going to come in here, of course, and type in your, your name. And following that, you're going to have your abstract there. We put some filler in there. You're going to put your keywords in here, four to six keywords. Your introduction is going to be about a half a page or a page of background information that explains a little bit about the science behind the uh, the computations that you're doing here. And if you read the uh, article on alkyl halides that is part of this week's activities, a uh, great deal of the background information, the introduction, should be able to come from, from that particular article. Keep in mind that typically the very last sentence of the introduction is a statement of what the research question is or what the researcher, in this case you, is trying to do in this particular article. Okay. The computational approach is a description of the methodology and one of the things that you should have in here is what's known as the model chemistry. And the model chemistry is the combination of the theoretical method and the basis set that you use for this particular experiment. We'll talk a lot more about model chemistry uh, next week. Your results and discussion is going to be, uh, uh, just as the name suggests, that's going to be your the results that you got from the uh, from the computations and a little bit of discussion. And the results can and probably should include uh, your uh, your actual data. You're doing that as a data table. So one way to do that is to just do a spreadsheet, you know, with whatever your whatever your numbers might be. And there's a variety of ways to do that. And depending on how good you are with Word, you can save this file. And then in Word, you can come up and you can, you can say, you know, in, insert, uh, insert a file. Uh, probably the easiest way to do this, and again, I'm on a Mac, so the way I would do this is I would come in and I would take just a screenshot of my data. Um, I would save it as a graphic. In my case, I can pretty much just copy it in and then somewhere at the appropriate place, wherever that might be, um, I, can, I can paste it in and then I can size it up to make it, <coughs> make it, make it look appropriate. So you do want to have, have your data in there. Um, and I would, again, probably the easiest thing to do is to do it as a data table. Likewise, you could do it, um, and if you want, you could do it in Mathematica, which is also a pretty easy thing to do. And again, probably the easiest thing um, uh, is to use some sort of screen capture kind of tool. I'm just going. I'm using uh, Grab here on the Mac, so I can um, I can uh, take a picture of my my graph and come in here wherever I want it to go and and paste that in and then I should be able to I should be able to size the thing up center it do whatever I want to do with it okay all right so uh, results and discussion is going to be your actual results if you have any graphs uh, they would certainly go in the results and discussion section okay uh, conclusion is going to be sort of the uh, it's not going to be sort of be it is going to be the the answer to your question so it's going to be what you found um, what you learned from this particular uh, computational experiment. Acknowledgements are uh, going to be exactly as, you, as the case may be. You're going to give me thanks uh, for helping you with this work because that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, because we're using the computational chemistry server, this was paid for by the Burroughs Welcome Fund and the North Carolina Science, Mathematics, and Technology Center. So they paid for the machine that you're using to do this work so you should always uh, acknowledge them and by the way there is a typo there it should say high school computational chemistry server you should fix that 
Under references, um, if you use uh, WebMO, which you're doing, we should cite them. And notice I need to say this was accessed, whatever the date may be. In this case, it's going to be October or September 2012. Okay. Um, if you likewise, if you access and use the CompChem server, you need to say that this was this was uh, accessed at, on a particular date. If I could type, I'd be okay. Um, if you use Mopac, you do the same thing. Uh, notice number four, the citation for Gaussian is quite long, um, so that just needs to be in there completely. And then for the last uh, reference, if you use the um, journal article on alkyl halides that you're reading for this week, that needs to be cited in some appropriate way. If you used any other uh, resources, you should, you should add those as, a, as appropriate, and that's how you're going to do this particular article. Mine sort, I'll give you a quick glance of what mine looks like. So I have a few, a little bit more stuff in here. So I've got my article name, I've got my abstract, you see about how long it is. Uh, I've got my introduction. You see about how long it is. Okay. Um, I've got my computational approach in there. I got pictures of my molecule under results and discussion. Um, I have some data tables in there. Uh, one of them's not there. It is. I have. I do have a graph that I put in there. Doesn't mean you have to. This. I'm just showing you what mine is. I'm showing you what my, my conclusions look like uh, under acknowledgments. I'm thanking somebody else because they're the ones that helped me do this particular project, and then I have my, uh, my references in there. So I hope this helps, and uh, look forward to reading your journal articles. Thanks very much.